patiently here this entire time. And if I now come back to the keynote, um, yeah, we can go, well, you know what, I'll dive into the keynote just a little bit. And we're going to talk a little bit about shared storage. How many people have heard that shared storage for Final Cut 10 is not great? OK, not many of you. Great. So th this won't come as any bit of a surprise to you. Um, so a lot of you guys may remember that I used to work with a company called LumaForge. And Neil, where are you? I'm here. Neil is in the back. If I had nothing really to do with this. Anything that you see here is largely credited to Neil Smith, who's sitting there listening to me babble on about this. But there's, <laughs> there's some really cool things that can be done with shared storage. And we're going to show how Final Cut 10 integrates with that. And there's a bit of a new product that I'm going to be demoing for you guys right now that is available in a few days. So basically, um, Collaborative editing today is a giant mess of server rooms and wires and switches and just horrible looking things that are extremely complicated for the average person. And the average editor has a major difficulty even wading in. And on top of that, like, I mean, how many of you guys even know what's stacked up here? I mean, there's a, a few hands. Look, there we go. So there's a few of you guys. Um, but even a larger problem is that most of collaborated, collaborative editing this day lives in the command line. And it lives in the terminal, and it's extremely hard to get in and even understand what's going on. Uh, and when they do have a GUI, such as XSAN, for instance, it's often not accurate. So even if it's telling you one thing is happening, it's usually wrong. <laughs> and this has caused a lot of problems. So. You know, when we kind of step through the traditional, you know, uh, I'm using XSAN as an architecture here. What, you, what you're typically looking at in this giant rack is you've got a UPS, uh, and then you've got a metadata controller. You've got one or two MDCs. They're going to pass metadata. You've got a secondary internet connection that's going to pump and, and send that connection to your clients. From there, you have a typically a fiber channel switch, which is actually going to send the data. And then you have a whole bunch of giant hard drive chassis. And this, when, you're all, when it's all said and done, what is this really reminiscent of when you look at this thing? This is supercomputing from the 1950s. And like these are actual pictures. I just pulled these off the internet. This basically looks like your server room. I mean, you know, and these things are loud. It's messy. It's a problem. And it makes collaborative editing unapproachable to the average person. So we've been doing a lot of Final Cut 10 integrations, and we've been seeing a lot of the solutions that people have. And there's been a lot of complaints. You have to keep your libraries off the network, et cetera. And it's been a problem. Um, here's the truth. XSAN is dead. Uh, if you guys have an XSAN system, it currently mounts. I'm, if anyone knows really what's going on on the back end of XSAN these days, please tell me. I'd love to know. Um, but it doesn't work very well. And there are new solutions that are needed. And so we've been hard at work in the lab. Mostly Neil has been hard at work in the lab trying to figure out how to make collaborative editing approachable and functional for the average person. So with Final Cut 10 specifically, you have a few issues. On a typical SAN environment, you're either working, um, you're typically working with XSAN. And the problem with a SAN environment in general is it has really hard time with small files, metadata-based files. So you're going to have stuff. And, and Final Cut 10 is built on a database. So it's constantly sending information back and forth. And it's, and because of this, you have really difficult load times if you have your libraries living on a SAN. Um, so typically, you know, there was a question earlier during Stump the Gurus. You're going to have uh, a library living off of the SAN, and you're going to be referencing media that lives on the SAN. And also, typically with network attached attach storage, you can't even have the library live on the network. Uh, you have to have it. Uh, Basically, you have to do something similar, but you can't even have the media management commands work 
with Final Cut 10 in a typical network detached storage environment. So this is now different as of today. So we are here to introduce the LumaShare Mobile. And what is the LumaShare Mobile? It is literally this. This is your entire server chassis. And we're gonna, you know, before we get too much further into, into the setup and all of that stuff, uh, we're gonna show you what's been on this monitor this entire time that we've been standing here. So Eric, if you wanna come on up, and Patrick, and by the way, a huge thank you to Patrick and Darren, and also I heard Chuck Braverman is here somewhere. Yeah. Hey Chuck. Um, we can go ahead and bring up the house lights here, and uh, I just want to give a huge thank you to, to these guys uh, who've made a lot of this possible. So before we turn that first one around, how many of you guys, how many of you guys were at the FCP Works demo a year ago? Um, we have a few. Do you guys remember seeing uh, Luke show off 16 streams of 4K playing across a uh, single monitor from the internal hard drive of Mac Pro? You guys remember that? Yeah. Did it look something like this? Eric, you want to turn the first monitor? So this is 16 streams of ProRes playing off um, a, off, off a uh, collaborative editing environment off of this box that I just showed you right there. Can we do another 16? Oh, there's 16 more. And by the way, these are playing back at full quality. Uh, so that we're not even at better performance. This is full quality right in Final Cut 10. Uh, and these, these, these are off two Mac Pros. Eric, can we do 16 more? This is 4K ProRes. This is uh, off 10 gig Ethernet and coming right into off of, well, we'll get to that. Um, so that's 48 streams of 4K. Do we have 16 more, Eric? So we're now up to 64 streams of 4K in a collaborative environment playing in Final Cut 10. These are the exact same files playing across all of these machines. And uh, Eric, can we do more? We don't, we're out of Mac Pros. We have an iMac there, though. Yeah, an iMac isn't quite a Mac Pro, but, you know, we can do 10 streams of... So this is 10 more streams of 4K on an iMac. So that's right now 74 streams of 4K playing? Yeah. You got a laptop, right? I have a laptop here that we're working on. And if I go pop into here, here's something that's interesting. If I go and select this LumaShare library... And we go, this is the 4K UHD library. And I click this project. And let's go and bring up the multicam. Let's see how many of these I can do off a laptop. This laptop that I've been demoing off this whole time. And this is also running off the LumaShare. Yeah, yep, this is all off the LumaShare. So this is an additional 10 streams a 4K ProRes coming off a laptop. And do you guys hear a lot of noise? <laughs> Eric, where is this all playing from? My favorite part of this thing is it has a handle. Oh, So that's 84 streams of 4K in a collaborative environment playing from Final Cut 10. And even more interesting is if we stop and look here, and uh, I control click this library, we'll see that this library is actually living off the LumaShare. So this, all of these libraries were playing directly from the LumaShare environment. And if we come in here, I have a larger library that pops down. We're missing a couple things from earlier, but uh, if, you, if you guys uh, aren't aware, there were a bunch of um, waveform and some of these other improvements. So this is a three terabyte library uh, that pops up. And if you notice how quickly these waveforms are appearing, 
this is all completely editable, guys. So this is, and this is from the, the top level. And we just keep going up. And some of these clips are hour long clips. So the point is you can do this in a collaborative environment. And if you notice how quickly these populate, you know, I can go and like the, that was 16 streams of 4K that are starting and stopping relatively quickly, but like you're probably not gonna do that in a typical environment. You might do three or four in a multicam and the response is immediate. And you're basically running direct out of the back of that machine into your laptop. This can live, this is designed for small groups of editors. And this is designed for um, labs. And this is designed to live on set. And there's a ton of uses for this, but what the real goal was to make collaborative editing accessible. And so you guys are probably wondering how much some of this costs. So basically, we've got a few different models in the LumaShare family. And uh, there is a, oh, so I'll just go through some of the details on this. You can run Macs, PCs, Linux. It's completely independent. There is no software licensing. This is completely open source. So you don't need to pay us any money for that. And it's configured out of the box with multiple IPs. You tell us how many users, and we're just going to get that going. It is highly portable. As you can see, it's fairly quiet, um, but it's highly portable in that it has a handle. So if you were in the education market, for instance, you can bring this from classroom to classroom. Uh, there are no racks or switches needed out of the box, and there's no monitor even needed because you can go right into the box with an ethernet cable and, and go check out the GUI. Uh, there's minimal latency, multiple colors, uh, and you can do gigabit. If you want to do gigabit Ethernet, um, you can, and that's just going to go right into the back of your Mac through a standard Ethernet cable. Um, there is an accurate GUI built in, and we, I think, are the only people who are doing final, specific Final Cut 10 optimization, uh, and I can talk with you a little bit deeper about how some of that works. But the point is, this is optimized to run Final Cut 10 media management commands. So uh, it works, you can, if a lot of you guys may know from the x days, this runs Spotlight too. So, and you can do tagging, there's no limitations in terms of the OS on there. And you know, if you're in the education market, and by the way, if you're in um, the Lacey Pug market, because we're offering a, a discount 10% off for anyone who mentions Lacey Pug to us. And uh, so that's gonna be why. So you probably wanna know what the pricing actually is. Well, and we. <laughs> Do, yeah, it goes. It gets lower. It's, it's, <laughs> um, so basically, we have a few different models. This is for small work groups. This is the HD light model. It's nine three and a half inch bays, and prices start literally from about nine grand to get going. And this is scalable up. We also have a twelve and fifteen bay version of that, which is not that radically more expensive. You can get up to like 90 terabytes here for like under 30 grand to start. And from there, we go into the really interesting stuff, which is the 4K models, which uh, can do some of the stuff that I was showing just now. And those start from about $25,000. And you can, are scalable up to 72 terabytes. And then if you really need to go fast, we have the SSD versions, which, you know, in that model, we can fit 58 SSDs into that box and get going. 58 SSDs in one box. Um, and it's still going to be just as quiet. And also, if you guys are in a facility, we can do the traditional rack mount, but we also have a, a quiet expansion chassis too. So this is configurable up to one and a half petabytes. You can do basically whatever you need to do, but it's all built on this, this architecture. So the bottom line is if anyone says that you cannot use Final Cut 10 in a shared environment, you absolutely can. And we have a solution that we think is somewhat compelling. Um, so anyway, this is launching next week. And uh, the website is not currently up based on this, we're actually, we're, we're remodeling. So if you go to the website right now, you're not gonna see anything about it. But that's going up May 1st. And if you guys have any questions, reach out to 
sales at lumaforge.com and uh, we're happy to show you this in person or you can come see it, you are seeing it now.